call that new matrix A4. So what was I doing here again? Minus one half, okay. Oh, I hate halves. Okay, so minus one is making this five halves, 14 halves, I don't know. Is that right? Can someone check this row for me? Is that right? People like it? Makes me worry how many people are doing because only like one or two people actually <laughs> <laughs> know if it's right. <laughs> They're like, yeah, looks good. It's always people way in the back. Usually those people are not actually paying attention, but apparently in this class it's reversed. It's the people in the front that aren't paying attention. Okay, what? That's, is that right or wrong? <laughs> so, yeah. So the first and second rows are right. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, somebody has the same as me? No, I have the same as Oh, how do you know? You get, <laughs> well, but that still opens up an infinite number of possibilities where you two, you two could still differ. But I'll just accept that I'm wrong. I'd like to think the three is right. Uh, yeah, is it the nine halves that's wrong? So what is it? I multiplied, so this become minus five halves, no, plus five halves, and that's 14 halves. Oh, it's plus, no. Is it minus nine halves? What do you think it is? How about that? I have like six and three at the bottom. Yeah, it's six yeah, and three. Yeah. You must have done something different than me. Well, I did divide the top row by three. Oh, okay. You have six and, so your claim is that whatever this number is, it should just be twice this number. So if, if, if I was smart, you're, you're claiming, which you apparently suggesting I'm not, <laughs> that this should be, is it minus six? No. No, no. Plus? Other way around. It's one and a half. One and a half. Oh, okay, so you think it's three halves. Yeah. That, that gives you the same equation as you have. I mean, yeah, yeah scalar multiple, yeah. Well, anyway, I guess it's not really supposed to be an exercise in me correcting my own algebra. <laughs> so let's just say that this is correct. <laughs> okay, so now you should have been able to solve this thing, and I hope this is true. Please tell me it is. That x3 is 3 halves divided by 3 is 9 over 2 or 4.5. Is that correct or not? No? Well, you gave me the equation. Huh? Could you give me the right equation to start with then? S six and three. Okay, the only thing that matters is this is twice as big as this. Mm -hmm. Oh! <laughs> Some questionable math there. That's what they call the new math, all right? All right, one half. You like that one? All right, all right. Okay. And so then I could, but obviously I'm not going to solve the rest. So w what is the answer for the, did you finish? I finished. Cool. Okay, what's, what's x2 then? X1. X1 is 4. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, but we haven't learned the inverse yet. <laughs> yeah. I've got a quicker way to do it, which I'm about to show you. Um, yeah, obviously you're not going to do this, okay, because my, you might imagine MATLAB's got some functions that solve sets of linear algebraic equations. The reason I gave you this exercise so you could better understand Gaussian elimination, because you're doing the same thing at, on MATLAB that you have to do on pen and paper, and pen and paper you do have to do it this way, and also so you would understand how to index rows and different elements of a matrix, so you'd be comfortable with that, so it's really, yeah? Uh, so, you switched the first and third rows, right? Yeah. Uh, I switched the first and the second, so I'm interested in different, but the answer Right, right, yeah, it doesn't matter how you do it, 
you'll get the same answer. Yeah. So all we're doing is, is rearranging and modifying the equations, but the underlying solution never changes. <laughs> Otherwise, the procedure would make no sense, right? The answer you get can't depend on how you find it. Okay. All right, so I'll give you just a couple more minutes and then I'll show you how you really want to find the answer. So next time we do MATLAB, I think, I'll, um, we'll be talking about how to solve sets of linear algebraic equations and there's, there's more efficient ways, obviously. So who, who, who claims they finished first? <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to make you drink this. Um, I could get probably a lawsuit if I made you drink that. Where's the dude that took the Altoids, though? I respect that guy. He's not even here today, probably. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> He's currently in the infirmary, you know, recovering from a, a, a strange, unknown bacterial infection. All right. All right. So, so you know, you know how I do this, right? I post the notes and then I solve the problem and I don't post the solution and then like I give you the solution and then I repost the notes. And so you know what I decided? This procedure was entirely too laborious. Um, so I just went ahead and solved it like, like this, okay? Um, so this is a function I'll teach you. So right, this is much preferable you can solve a matrix. Um, this is like they call motivation, right? So I define the matrix A, I define the vector B, and then I issued this command. There's different ways to do this in MATLAB. There's actually three different ways. One is what you said, the inverse. But this function linsolve, if you, gives you, the, you give it the matrix A and the vector B and it spit back, as long as there is an answer, the vector X, okay? And just for kicks, of course I can't see my screen, so I guess I won't have any kicks. Let me just try one thing. So I want to illustrate something if, if, if it's going to allow me. <laughs> I'm like, I can see my screen. <laughs> You're, yeah, uh, well, I think it's more important that I see it than you. Is it, is it up there now? Yep. Okay. Okay, just real quick. Just because we, we seek excitement in new things. Hey, my code failed. That's fine. Um, so what was it? This H, I'll call it A equals... <coughs> Okay, you see this? Remember this thing I said, this Hilbert matrix, if it gets too big, is not good. So I guess I have to create a B vector that, I'll just do the following. B equal ones. Eh. What do I need? I need uh, three rows and one column. And then I could do this X equal, hopefully I have lens solve here, I do. Okay, I'm just making up problems as I go along. So you can see, that's nice, right? That's something you could realistically do yourself if you wanted to. But let's say, for example, I gave you the 10 by 10 Hilbert matrix, which is not as fun. Then I got to make this 10 dimensional so it's the right dimension. Now I could seek to find the answer for that. And um, you see MATLAB has found the answer. This, this, the, this is a matrix for which if you found the rank, it would say it's 10. You can see the answer is getting kind of large. Do you, when you see notation like this in MATLAB, it means it thinks it's kind of a pain, right? The first number <laughs> is, okay, let's take the last number. It's telling you the last number is 0 0.9237 times 10 to the sixth. That's what it's telling you. It's not actually telling you the first number is exactly zero. It's just saying to that number of significant digits. It might be five or something, but with that number of significant digits, it's zero. Um, and then to really torment MATLAB, you could, give, you could give it the 15 dimensional. This is the one it thinks is rank 12. So I suspect it's not going to enjoy this one. See this note up here? I don't know if I gave that note before. I didn't actually look before. No, it was okay. Okay, so now it solved the problem, but it gives you this message. It says, 
we're going to talk more about this. I'm just wasting time because I'm. I think this is fun because that's the way I. Uh, that's the way I roll. Okay. It says matrix is close to singular badly scales. The results may be inaccurate. It gives you something called the condition number, which we'll talk about later. But so when Matt, you know, MATLAB sometimes gives you these warnings, and sometimes they'll give you a warning. A student will call me and they'll say, "I got this warning." I'm like, "Don't worry about it." Then if you got this warning, I'd say, "Oh, this is really bad news." Okay. <laughs> So it is telling you, you know, I've, got, I've given you an answer, but I myself have reason to believe it's not very accurate. So you should like approach the, your solution with caution. If you want to use this answer, I'm not providing any promises it's very accurate, okay? So obviously you can appreciate at this point, if I, yeah, I just solved, okay, I didn't, let's take the previous case. I solved uh, 10 equations and 10 unknowns, and it consisted of doing the following. One, two, Three, okay. So you can imagine how'd you like to do that Gauss elimination thing on that 10 by 10 matrix? Okay, that wouldn't be very much fun. Um, and so the code, the kind of code that exists here, does something similar to what I just had you do. Obviously, it's a lot more sophisticated than that, but it's it's, it's roughly similar. Okay, so I don't know what we'll talk about tomorrow, but we'll talk about something, and I'll be here. Um, so if you want your uh, MATLAB homeworks, they're here. I'll put them over here. Yeah. You need your signature for this. Okay. So it's not after the deadline, or it is, and that's why you need the. Oh, okay. Uh, I wanted to ask you something. Hmm? MATLAB, you just learned on yourself through coding. Yeah. Pretty much. Did you take classes on comp sci, or you just kind of. No, I just, I just learned it by solving problems I wanted to solve. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, originally the problems were pretty simple, and then they got more more difficult. But yeah, just best way to learn is by doing, right? Yeah. So I never, I never took a class or anything. For your undergrad, did you really focus on spending your class or just kind of like breeze your way through it? Yeah. Through what? Undergrad studies. Was it hard, you mean? Yeah, or I mean, did you... It was, it was painful. Yeah. But that's different than hard, right? Yeah.